Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I paid £71.85 for this broken Nintendo Switch. Can't actually remember what's wrong with it, but £71.85 it equates to around about $78.55 in Yankee Bucks. So I bought this about a week ago, but it's currently 2am and I'm tired and I can't remember what's wrong with it. So let's take a look on eBay at the listing. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, then I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support the channel, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account if you've got one to Twitch. And then you can subscribe to my channel, which gives me around about $2.50 every month. And it massively helps out the channel, but if you've already got Amazon Prime, it doesn't cost a penny. So with that being said, talking of money, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you in part by Zilch. With Zilch you can spread the cost of payments in three easy to manage payments. Purchases made using Zilch Pay in 3 are simple to set up and interest free. Personally I use Zilch for a lot of my online purchases on eBay, Amazon and even in local shops where I can spread the cost of payments over three easy to manage payments. On top of that, if you use Zilch for everyday purchases you'll get 2% cash back on transactions when paying in full. You can pay in full using either Google Pay or using the virtual debit card that's provided by Zilch anywhere where MasterCard is accepted. As you can see from my transaction list here, I use it on eBay, I use it at local shops, I use it on Uber Eats and I even pay my car finance where I'll pay in full and earn 2% back. I also occasionally use Zilch to pay in free when money's a little bit tight. I recently bought a PlayStation 5 on eBay for £218.61 and that payment is next due in 7 days. 25% was taken directly from my visa at the time and then 25% in 7 days and then 25% a further 2 times. I also use Zilch to earn referral rewards and for every person that you refer you'll both get £15 completely free. Simply use my referral code in the video description and start earning cash back or spreading the cost of payments today. Now back to the video. So if we take a look at this listing here you'll see I bought this on the 3rd of August. It's took eight days to actually arrive i actually got into an argument uh, not an argument it was like a discussion on discord with a few viewers about times and stuff like that uh this one i could see that it had been dispatched so i waited a little bit longer but then i had another one today let's see if i can find that one uh it's here somewhere i'll buy way too much stuff no it's further down than that Ah, it's here. So I had this one earlier where I cancelled the order because the seller took uh, way too long to even get it ready. So I ordered this on the 6th. Today is the, well, it was the 11th and they hadn't even, they hadn't even booked in the collection until half past nine this morning or quarter to ten this morning. So yeah, I went a bit mental, cancelled the order. I said, nope, not taking it. I'm, I'm not having it. But uh, this one I could actually see was dispatched. So if we look at the tracking here, you'll see that the tracking was actually arranged on the 3rd of August. So uh, they attempted to collect, for some reason couldn't collect it. Uh, collected it, uh, apparently they couldn't collect it for three days. But oh well, I could see that the seller at least tried to book it in. So I did wait on this one. Uh, but this one came at 4.20pm today. So, or yesterday technically. But if we take a look at the listing description here, you'll see £65 plus £6.85 delivery. And um, okay, well, that's why I bought this one. All he says is Nintendo Switch Forte. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, fine. We don't know what's wrong with it. So here's the Nintendo Switch. It comes with the Joy Cons, as you can see. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see, first of all, what's going on with the ammeter so just up in the corner here we've got an ammeter what this will do is this will tell me what kind of current is being drawn from the system and hopefully give me some sort of an indication as to what could be wrong with this and apparently it's not detecting anything let me just make sure that it's actually working my battery's dead on my phone yep okay charge is working so, not detecting nothing at all. Okay. 
on both sides of the port. All right. Well, let's see if we can fix this then, shall we? I'm going to pop my phone on charge. May as well. All right. So we've got no USB-C detect on this then. So what that means is when you plug in a device, what's going to happen, and you can see this happening on this USB ammeter here. What it's going to do is it's going to start off at 5 volts and the device is going to talk to the charger and it's going to tell the charger right i don't want five volts i want nine volts or i want 12 volts or 15 volts 20 volts whatever it is up to 20 volts it's going to talk to the charger and it's going to tell it what it needs and then the charger is going to say okay yep so there you go you've got five volts there and then it'll bump up so it'll talk to the charger and um, basically it'll say right I need so and so voltage can you do that the charger will say yes and it'll send it back and then some magic will happen and then it'll start charging this one hasn't got or rather this one hasn't got any USB detect picking up so that could mean a couple of things it could mean a bad USB-C port so there's certain lines on the USB-C port which talk to the M92T36 chip which is the USB-C power delivery chip and also talk to the charger as well and it goes back and forth like I said so it could indicate a bad charge port it could indicate that there's a bad fuse so on the voltage input uh, lines on the charge port you've got a fuse and sometimes that fuse just blows either because of a bad charger a power surge or whatever whatever the case may be sometimes that fuse does blow it's rare but it does happen so it could be a bad fuse or it could be a bad M92 T36 chip. Very rarely have I seen it be a bad P13 USB or Pi 3 USB chip, which is responsible for some of the charging circuit, but the main, the main function of that chip is for video output for the dock. So very rarely do I see that. But yeah, gonna be interesting. I know a lot of people don't actually like to see Nintendo Switch repairs, but I still do. I still do enjoy working on them. They're nice and easy. Uh, they're a perfect starter device. Shut up, phone. Uh, my phone just started vibrating. They're a perfect starter device if you want to practice repairs. And uh, I highly recommend starting out with these. Okay, anyway, enough rambling from me. Let's get this thing disassembled shall we it's in really good condition actually it's not too badly scuffed on the back you know very minimal scratches no free game or sd card that sucks but never mind can't see any kind of uh, symptoms of being bananaed which is pretty good to be fair because these are these things are prone to bending and also all of the screws are there so these screws haven't been taken out i don't think it looks like there's no scuff marks on them the dock isn't great, or not the dock, the kickstand. The kickstand's a little bit loose, but other than that, it seems in fairly good condition. That's the tri wing screwdriver, never mind. So let's get this apart. I'm going to stop waffling on. I'm going to get this apart. I'm going to do some tests and see if it wants to work with the bench power supply which is basically going to replicate a full battery and also at the same time I'm going to do some tests with the multimeter okay has this been messed with the foam I think has been taken off at some point I think it has been worked on all right So just because it's been worked on doesn't indicate that someone's done something wrong to it or anything like that. Okay, so you can see up here in the top right hand corner, I've got the bench power supply set up. And what I'm going to do, I've got a test cable here, which I made myself because I'm an absolute genius. <laughs> no, they're actually pretty easy to make. So this is a test cable and on one end it's got some banana jacks and on the other end it's got a battery board from a nintendo switch battery and um, basically what this will allow me to do is it will replicate a full battery so if i set the bench power supply just up opposite side when i'm on face cam um just up there um if you look at that that's 4.2 volts that is technically a full battery so basically it'll replicate a full battery and 
if it's something that's not as severe as, for example, a chip, then it'll allow it to boot. So, yeah, we're going to try that. So, here we go. Let's see what happens when I boot that. And it does indeed boot. Or does it? Ah, okay. Well, that would explain a lot. So, it does actually boot, technically. We've got an error code which says 2101-0001. And that is a power delivery error code. And that, in particular, remember what I said at the start? It could be a bad M92 chip. Well, M92 T36 is responsible for power delivery, so talking to the charger. And it's also the cause of this specific error code. That's a power failure error code. So that is 99% of the time going to be this chip here, which has failed. Should be nice and straightforward. But that, of course, are the famous last words. So if I'm an absolute genius, and I do like to think I am, it's going to have a short on the middle capacitor at the top. Let's see if I'm right. All right, so here's M92 T36. It's just by the fan. And the caps I'm talking about are going to be this bank of four here. So let's grab the multimeter. And I'm going to set the multimeter into diode mode. Okay, and I'm going to pop the red probe on ground. And the black probe I'm going to pop on the capacitors. Oh, showed up multimeter. Sorry, let me just turn the beeper off. There we go. And we'll test these caps, and we get 0 0.323. That's a fine reading. And boom, middle capacitor. Oh, whoops, that cap is loose. But it is coming up as short. That one's coming up as good. That one's coming up as bad. Good, good. Okay, well, that would indicate that M92 T36 is bad. Okay, so now I look like an absolute genius because I've just pinpointed the exact capacitor which has gone bad. Uh, but it's not actually the capacitor which has gone bad, it's going to be the chip. It's always the chip, it's never the cap. I do need to reflow that cap back into place though. That is one thing. So I'm going to get this board out. By the way, when I'm calling myself a genius or whatever, I'm just, just messing around. <laughs> I know I'm far from a genius. Trust me. I'm just trying to be funny. Trying to be a comedian. Uh, actually, that's not been off before, I don't think. I'm going to heat it up just so I don't damage the foam. And damage the foam anyway. Of course I do. Huh. Oh, it's fine. I'd rather keep it intact, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Yeah, that's never been off. That's the original factory thermal paste. Okay, well, let's clean that off because it always ends up all over my hands and table. Okie doke. So I'll carry on disassembling this. I'm actually quite happy that this one's going to be fixable. Assuming there's no other issues with it. Because it is in fairly decent condition. There we go. So I've got the board out there. So what I'm going to do first is just inspect this charge port because that could cause the M92 T36 chip to go bad. So I'll inspect that under the microscope. And yep, that port might look okay to some people, but to me that looks bad. So I'm trying to keep this still here, but bear in mind I have to hang over the edge of the table. But let me try and explain why this is bad. So just on the edge here, We've got some pins, and they are slightly sticking out of the grooves. That pin there especially. Yeah, so I'm going to change that port. Because otherwise this is going to end up damaging the M92 again. So with my hot air set at 440 degrees Celsius. I'm just going to heat up this port. By the way, if you can hear a fan in the background, apart from the hot air, if you can hear another fan, I apologise. It is really, really warm at the moment. Uh, I've just realised I haven't got my tweezers. Damn it. 
There they are. So 440 degrees Celsius. And I'm just going to heat this up. And there we go. So there's the old port removed. Let's just add some flux here. So flux is going to help the solder to flow. The flux that I use is called Kingbo RMA218. That's K-I-N-G-B-O. Not sponsored, but I've always used Kingbo and I have never had an issue. So with that done, I'm going to replace the solder that's on here at the minute with some fresh leaded solder. The solder that's on there is lead free. and That's got a higher melting temperature than leaded solder has. And uh, leaded solder is just far superior in every way. So I'll start with the ground legs there. And then I'll tin the pads as well. There we go. I'm using Kester leaded solder, by the way. Again, not sponsored, it's just good stuff. Do from underneath as well, just to show off a little bit. So next up, I'm gonna grab a brand new port Personally, I buy these in packs of 100. You can get them from AliExpress, you can get them from eBay as well, but I buy them in bulk from AliExpress. If you do these in any any kind of quantity, just buy a pack of 100. You're going to work out so much cheaper in the long run. But now what I'm going to do is, same temperature, 440 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to heat up the board where the port goes again. So I'm not going to do anything with the port, I'm not going to pre tinny I'm not going to clean out those joints, uh, the solder joints, you know, the ground legs or anything like that. I'm just going to heat up from the bottom. And then I'm going to drop the port on when I see that the solder's all molten. I've got something weighing the board down as well. I'm actually using my BJ reboiling jig to weigh the board down. That way then I can put a little bit of pressure on it. Notice I'm not putting the port anywhere near until I'm ready to drop it down. Talking of dropping down, I'm waiting to see that solder on the ground legs drop a little bit. Come on. There might be enough solder in there to where it doesn't do it. So I'll just move the air around a little bit now. Press down on that port, move the heat away, give it a quick wiggle test and that should be good. The key word there of course being should. Okay, I'm back on the bench, I'm ready to clean this up now. So all I'm going to do is just use a bit of isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush and I'm just going to give it a good scrub. Just clean off that flux and as you can see those ground legs look absolutely solid because I didn't clean anything up I didn't suck out the solder or anything so it's just basically formed itself around the ground legs on the port which is what we're going for and um, that looks really nicely aligned to me let's just give this a nudge test
Beautiful, absolutely solid. All of those are absolutely solid. All right, while I'm in this area, I'm just gonna test the fuse. So the multimeter reading in diode mode when testing the fuse should be 0, 0.000 or very close to. And yep, yeah, that's a good fuse. Cool. Okay, so fuse is good. And now I can move on to the M92 T36. So like I said earlier, the M92 T36 is basically the USB-C charging chip. And it's responsible for taking the charging input voltage, talking to the charger and distributing to the board. And that should realistically be all that's wrong with this. So without adding any flux, because otherwise it's just going to make a mess. I'm still at 440 degrees Celsius, but I'm just going to remove this chip. I use the heat and drop method. So basically what that does is I heat it up and at the same time I put some upward pressure on the chip. So, so I'll basically hold the chip and that will cause the board to fall down and give me a nice clean removal. So you can see I've still got most of the solder all down there. And then I don't even need to tin it, or at least I shouldn't. So I can just place the chip roughly in the right place. Partially solder that down, so heat it up a little bit, just till it's at a point where I can nudge on the chip and it won't actually come away from the board. And then I can just add a teeny tiny bit of flux. I'm going to drop my airflow down to 20%. And now I'll flow this down and it should just jump into place. It didn't jump into place, but it is soldered. I don't need to push down on this chip, by the way. That should be perfectly aligned. I shouldn't need to do anything to that chip, realistically, as long as we've got no excess solder scrolls out. I'll just clean it off. And I know I said leaded solder is better than lead free, but there's nothing wrong with the solder that's on here. So why change it? And that looks fairly well aligned to me. Oh, that's beautiful. Yep, perfect. All right, so the final thing I want to do quickly is just test these filters for P13 USB or Poi 3 USB. So I'm going to go continuity mode. I'm going to turn the beeper on for this and just check these filters one by one, make sure they haven't blown. This looks like a Nintendo refurb board based on the color of the filters. And yep, those filters are checking out. So what we should see there is we should hear, or rather hear, we should hear a beep when we put one probe on the top and one probe on the bottom of each of these. There's two filters on each component. And we shouldn't hear a beep when we go from left to right. And that would indicate a good filter with no cross torque. And also just while I'm here, let's just check for a short to ground on Pi 3 USB. And good, that's a good reading. Uh, or at least, it's a good reading because the board's warm. Everything checks out. Everything checks out. Let's get it back together. Uh, let's give it a test, shall we? Okay, you ready? So we've got the USB on meter here. Let's see what happens. There we go. Charge symbol. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've got 0.14 amps at 15 volts. That is charging. That is charging. So let's just pop the back on while I'm waiting for it to charge. 
And we should be good. We should be on a win onto a winner here. Absolutely brilliant. And I'll just pop a warranty sticker on this because this is going to be sold on eBay. So I will pop a warranty sticker on. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's back together. So just while I'm waiting, I'm just going to use a bit of IPA on a cloth. Just give it a clean, get rid of any crap what's picked up off the desk. This is awesome. It's nice when you get a win from eBay. What's the serial number? XIJ400652. Not exploitable. Okay. Not exploitable. That's fine though. It's still. Well, fingers crossed, a working Nintendo Switch, assuming everything actually works. I'm just clean the screen. There we go. And awesome. I'm going to get rid of that chip. No good. There we go. That's in pretty good condition, to be fair. All right. All that's left to do now is just literally wait for this to charge. And yeah, and then I'm good to go, hopefully. Give it a test. Get it on eBay. Get it sold. Boom, there we go. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, this has got some... Uh, well, it's got Animal Crossing on it. <laughs> and that's a digital game. It's going to get factory reset, to be fair. Let's just do a few checks on it, make sure it works. <laughs> it's in really good condition. I should be able to sell this for around about £160, which is not bad at all. Ding. Ha <laughs> ha, got ya. Got it. Alright. That works. Let's check the Joy-Cons. Yep, Joy-Cons are charging. Excellent. Uh, 11.0, it needs an update. Uh, no parental controls, that's fantastic. Um, all of that seems to work. No dead spots on the screen. Joy-Cons actually feel pretty good. Yeah. Solid, look at that. That Joy-Con is perfect. Solid. Wow, those Joy-Cons are absolutely perfection. Absolutely perfect. Awesome. 4006529072. Yep, that matches the case. That's fantastic. Absolutely awesome. Everything appears to be working perfect. I don't have a game to hand. I will test a game, but I just don't have one to hand. Okay, so the final test is just going to be to check it on the dock. So let's just pop that onto there. Okay, it picks up 15 volts. Working on the dock, it's charging, it's turning on. I'm assuming it's going to play a game. <laughs> I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. But, you know, I'm happy. It's in pretty pristine condition. So, yeah, I'm going to throw a original charger with this and I'm going to whack it on eBay for around about £170. And I should get it. I should get £170 easily for it. So, happy days, another successful repair, and uh, I should be able to make a tidy little bit of profit on this one. 
So that's going to be for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I always do my best to read and reply to as many comments as I possibly can. If you do want to organise a repair, I do offer it as a service. Head over to consolefix.co.uk and you can book in the repair or get in touch with me if you have a question about the repair. If you want to head over to Discord, you can chat with us over there as well. There's a really active community, over 1,400 members now. Absolutely fantastic, completely free to use. So you can come and chat, get help, help with the uh, repair that you've got, things like that. And uh, yeah, a really, really fantastic community. I highly recommend checking that out. If you do want to support me, there'll be a Patreon link in the video description. You can also head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch. Or you can click on the join button below the video, located conveniently right below the subscribe button, or right next to the subscribe button, I think. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.